Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's stream of Mapping It Out. Ha! We're looking at the battle map editor first. If you are new to the stream, welcome to the stream. We have got some cool demos, we've got some cool information, and we've got some asset packs that we're going to be talking about, as well as a major event that is coming up in the next few months, which I feel like you should be getting ready for. So tonight's kind of a packed show. If you have any questions, please write the word QUESTION in caps in the front of your question, and then I will be able to see your question nice and clearly, and then I will pose it to our guest tonight, who of course is none other than Till, who's eagerly anticipating all of your questions. Now, the team were mainly on holiday during the month of August. That's why there was no stream last month. So if you were wondering, hey, did I remember catching the stream? Uh, no, no, there was no stream in July. So that's why they were all taking a well-deserved break. And you're going to find out tonight that I don't feel like they actually took a break. They seem to just carry on working from wherever it was that they, that they went. Anyway, hopefully you had a break over this uh, summer period. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're going, what the hell? What, what do you mean there's a break going on? It's bloody winter. We're not going anywhere. Anyway, um, so there we go. Right, let's get on with the bleeding show before I do any more accents. So let's go straight into news. And here we go. Oh, I shouldn't have gone into news. News. <laughs> And that must have been Till making the news noise, which you've heard for the first time because I activated the thing at the right time. Till, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be back. Thank you for, again, uh, hosting our show, Guy. Um, and hello, everyone. A well-deserved break, i.e. a massive rainstorm, uh, says uh, the Incubus. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, you didn't have rainstorms on your holiday, did you? You had sun, 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 and more sun. Yeah, we had, we mainly had, um, heat wave and yes. dry, <laughs> dryness. Yes, we did not have that in the UK. We watched as the infernal fires of hell washed over Southern Europe and just skipped around the coast of England. We had, uh, very mild weather. So, uh, till from, um, echo from Till. I know why there's an echo from Till, because I am an idiot. So, I will try and get rid of that as best I can. Okay, so, tonight, Till, we're talking about a whole bunch Should of Should we things. test, test, test it, 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 a bit, 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 bit? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, we did test it. We tested it. We tested, it, but we can never test as an audience. It's always a trick. Um, now, so hopefully, the, hopefully the echo is yeah. is reduced now, folks. Is gone. Um, now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, echo fixed. Yay! Still an echo for Till. Well, uh, someone is lying and someone is not, or someone is better hearing or better speakers, or I. Uh, well, let's see. Okay, we are talking about the downtime that the team had and. Uh, did the team actually manage to have downtime? Did they actually manage to get away and, and have a bit of a break? Yes. So um, with with now, I mean, we're now about ten people, um, which means that you you kind of um, you kind of have to plan around summer vacations. I'm 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 fairly sure it's it's the same all around the world. We um, like Thomas, Herbert, me, myself. Um, we're we're having family and kids, school kids, to some point. Um, so for, uh, July and August, we need to figure out how we can actually kind of maintain, um, a, a basic, uh, maintenance here while still everyone is going on vacation and also try not to have overlaps where, um, probably someone is just returning from vacation when someone else would actually need stuff. And suddenly a two week vacation turns out in a four week delay because, because handover was not well planned. So that's always a bit of, 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 of a juggle. Um, so generally speaking, what we did was um, we tried to have some parts at the end of July, which included me, and then um, all the core developers taking a break somewhere around the same time um, at the beginning to midst of August, and then returning back to work um, uh, after that. Um, so trying to bundle it all up while still trying to keep things flowing. Um, and I think we did well. Um, 
I hope everyone's everyone's um, batteries are recharged. Everyone's back with full power. I am at least. Um, so yeah, so September is coming, and we are eager to go where the code takes us. Well, speaking of the code taking us, um, how are we looking in terms of the roadmap for the battle map editor? We are on on track, right? Well, I haven't brought I haven't brought a new update slide for for the roadmap today because nothing major has changed. Which again is a um, because we had a lot of vacations, um, mm. and b because there is no we make progress. I'm fairly certain that we can show a lot of new battle map stuff um, in September, um, but right now there's like we're trotting along. Everything's on track, everything's happening, but in terms of flashy new screens that we can show, nothing major has happened in August. Well, you say that, but I think... Yeah, I know there, there are some flashy in screens dietary. coming up. There are some flashy screens coming up, exactly. Uh, yes, so, uh, right, just a reminder to all of you who are watching, as I see Damien the DM has just joined us, we are no longer on the YouTubes. We are now only on the Twitch um, for various reasons. Um, but yes, you will now only find the Dungeon Fog broadcasts on their Twitch channel. But the recap well, does thank sit. Thank you, new rules. <laughs> <laughs> the recap and the video itself you will find on YouTube later on in the week. So if you do miss a part of it, you can always catch it there. Next, we are talking about the new asset pack. That's going to be coming, not soon, but it's coming. But that... You can say soon, yes. It is soon, soon TM, yes. But that is in celebration of something that is happening on the 5th of November. And it is not the replacement of the British government, as has tried once before on the same date. It's something much more important, in my opinion. What is happening on the 5th of November? Oh, okay. Um, on the 5th of November which is a nice date for it, um, is also our fifth... It, we are celebrating our fifth anniversary. Um, yes. So five years of Dungeon Fog in the making in on November the 5th, which is pretty exciting. As we can tell by the way that you said that we're celebrating five it's years. Pretty exciting. <laughs> I was so excited when I discovered this this morning, folks. I was like, has it been five years? My God, that yeah. it doesn't make sense. Let me go and check. And lo and behold, there was a map that I made when I first started using Dungeon Fog. That was on the 20th of September, 2018, almost five yeah. years ago. And the very first map I made, I have to say I was quite proud of because I made it to try and break Dungeon Fog. And I achieved my goal in the end, but I wanted to see this new software that had just come out. I wanted to see how far I could push it. How big a map could I make? Because I have drawn maps that fit over an entire dining room table on graph paper. Yes, I was that kind of kid in high school. I wanted to see what I could do with Dungeon Fog. And then I thought, well, let's have a look at that first map. Because that first map has changed and evolved. And we had version 3 and then version 5 and then version 7 or whatever it is that we're on now. I can't even remember. And so I had a look at that map. And I thought, well, what if I just tweaked it with some of the new tools that we have achieved that has been made by this amazing team? Let me add it and see if there's a difference. So you tell me if you can see which is the original map and which is the new map. Now, unfortunately, because of my arrogance trying to break Dungeon Fog, I made a huge map. I think this is like 60 or 70 by 70. It's a very big map. And I wanted to see, can I build a grand castle in it? So this one, <clears throat> this one is the very first map that I made in Dungeon Fog. It was an awful map. There were so many broken things. The walls weren't on point. It was just an absolute mess. And uh, Lensman de Leoncourt, you smell of elderberries. You can't tell the difference. No, no, you can't. Um, at the moment, it's so zoomed out, you can't really tell the difference. But in the new map, there's the new lighting system that came in. There are path tools which reduce the number of assets by half. And I haven't replaced most of the assets 
for a very specific reason. So this was my attempt to start celebrating five years of this amazing software, was to go back to my old maps and say, you were great then, you can be better now. So next month, I'm going to take the same castle and I'm going to be replacing the assets. But with what, I wonder, he said, having very cunningly worked out how to yeah. segue into the new assets, which are... The new fantasy assets. So yes. um, what we're... Yes. yes. Um, we've been talking about this for quite some time. And um, we actually used the the summer break um, to dive into it. Because five years ago, when you said in September, you said in September you mm. did that map. That was actually mm. still beta. Um, because mm. the, the launch was at the end of October, start of November. That's when we actually launched Dungeon Fox. So this map is beta material that you've shown. Um, and for that, we had Tony, um, our artist, um, to create a first set of fantasy assets. And I think he did an amazing job. I kind of butchered them back then when I started to do color adjustments to it because mm -hmm. I was under the impression that that looks better. Um, and with the years, with five years passing, Tony improved his style. We improved our technology. Everything mm -hmm. kind of got better and better, more detailed um, and, and, and and more refined in the styling. So it started to become obvious which one is the oldest pack in our mm -hmm. library. So I asked Tony and we said, okay, let's take the first fantasy pack that we did and let's rework that with all the fancy new stuff that we have, all the new kind of, um, let's say, style guide design directions that we have decided upon within the last couple of years. Um, so let's just go in there and redo it. And I think it is absolutely fantastic. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So don't be like me and go, wait, what's the new ones? Where's the old ones? Look at the texture on the floor for the division between the old and the new. If you can't actually see the difference, you should be able to. This is all of the old stuff. And over there on till side of oh, space on behind till is all of the new stuff. So we can see things like the the stove or the hearth or the fireplace depending on what you use it for i've used it in kitchens i've used it in great halls it's longer it's wider it's more fantastic and if you buy now you're going to get three more stoves included because you never have enough there is just i mean till how many props are there because the fantasy pack was quite big to begin with um, yes, the fantasy pack. Well, the initial fantasy pack was, I think, 125 assets. Mm. Um, we didn't rework each and every asset in there because we actually sat down and we said, OK, wait, um, for every pack that we did, we did more trees or more mm. bushes. Um, so why should we rework another tree when we already have about 30 trees in the library? Um, so I think it ended up somewhere around 70 assets that have been reworked. Um, and I'm pretty sure that once we release them, you will come up with stuff that still needs refinement or rework. Um, so it's not the end of the road or it's not the end of the story. It's rather the beginning of the story. So I'm pretty sure there will be more coming in the future. Um, but what I like best about it, apart from having those stronger outlines, more color depth, um, is also it's it's much more precise on the um, size aspect ratio, which is really cool. Um, because the initial ones were basically we, we just drew them and then we scaled them to what we think might be a good representation. Mm -hmm. And over the past couple of years, we have developed our, I think, quite thorough style guide where we say, okay, 
we need 200 pixels per grid um, with a grid equaling five feet. Um, so we can actually take that and kind of build a relation between stuff. Um, so here now they are all kind of, and I think that's the goal. That's the goal of whatever we want to do moving forward is we have now, and you might see it, it's 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 actually fairly hidden. Uh, I don't know where I need to point. Um, behind the um, behind the assets, we have those new, which are now coming to, we have those new textures. They work like the um, mm. backgrounds from outdoor. They yes. are actually bigger hand-drawn textures that you can use as indoor backgrounds. Um, and then we have uh, the uh, the wooden floor. Yes, parquet which flooring also, and wooden the parquet decking. flooring, mm -hmm. which also comes with um, single parquet um, <sighs> tiles. So um, this is actually currently work in progress because I need to build textures out of all of those things. Um, but this is going to be much much more aligned to each other because the color palettes we're using are mm. in line to the asset and the color palettes of the assets. Um, and also in line, that's why we have the green grass here, also in line with the outdoor. Um, so everything should be out of the same box when you place mm. it. And again, sizing now matters much more and therefore they will fit much better into each other when you start combining them to create a scene. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I could swoon over each of those props, the candlesticks. I've never used the original candlestick prop because it just, it, it, its perspective yeah. set, felt a little bit I mean, weird. You can, and... I think I think it's it's really nice to see, uh, look at the flagpole that's above the oh, yes. straw dummy. Um, oh, yes. Yes. We had to learn our way into the the new perspective. perspective. It was new exactly. for Tony. If yeah. you think about it, Tony is a Tony is a is an um um what do you call it? Artboard? No. What it what's yes, it called? A storyboard artist. Um, mm. Storyboard. Thank you. That was mm. the word I was looking for. Is a storyboard artist. So typically, um he he's not using that perspective. So he had to work his head around how to get things into perspective. A lot of stuff was very awkward in, in the beginnings and now is getting much more refined and much more detailed. Like the statue, for example, looks really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with it. Fantastic. Now, a few questions immediately came into my mind when I saw this. Uh, firstly, are you going to just update all of the existing props with these new props? So all of my old maps will suddenly have these new props. Are we, what's happening with the, the old props okay. and the new yeah. props? Because there are some that's old props actually, that are still pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. So that's a heated discussion or that has been a heated discussion for the past couple of weeks is how are we going to distribute them? Because um, whatever we do, we might we might make someone unhappy. If we say we, we, we're replacing the props and they automatically are replaced on the maps, the reason that they're not one-to-one -one in aspect ratio because we've adjusted the aspect ratios might mean that old maps get broken um, or maps mm -hmm. using those assets get broken. So the pro would be, I don't have to manually update my assets versus the con would be, oh, wow, Dungeon Fork has destroyed my map with the mm -hmm. new aspect ratios. Mm. Um, so we're, we're, we're not leaning toward this decision. Now we could also say, well, we just, we leave the old assets on the old maps, which we most likely will do because then it's, then we're not breaking someone else's work. Um, and we just disable the old assets so they can't be found anymore in the, um, prop picker again, pro. We only have cool assets and no one is accidentally using terrible old assets versus con, like you said, but there are still some nice assets in the old packs. Mm. So why did you take them away from us? Mm. Um, and what we're currently kind of leaning tower is the decision to say, okay, we are releasing them as let's say fantasy 2023 or as a new fantasy pack that will add to the full list of fantasy assets. 
um, and just leave that decision open to the users, which again has a pro. It means you can use whatever you want. We're not taking away anything, even if we don't like it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, to the con that you might say, okay, this is actually messing up um, the, the, the prop library because I get a lot of old props that I actually don't use. Mm. So what we're going to do, I think the at, at least to my opinion, the best way is to slowly let them drain out, just promote them in, promote the newer ones in a higher recommendation. Um, mm. And eventually we will probably, if we see that a prop is not being used anymore in terms of um, is not being picked up and placed on the map, yeah. we can at least disable it in the in the, in the prop picker. So we're mm -hmm. we're just not we're just not offering that option anymore. We're not taking anything away from existing maps. We're just not giving the offer to say, hey, would you like to place this terrible old carpet that is also desaturated? By till which was a terrible mistake <laughs> i do think I, I yeah i think the last option is probably the best option because i look at those metal yeah. grids for example the square one i like the fact that those metal bars are not symmetric that they that they mm -hmm. are a bit haphazard you go well that's sort of goblin-esque and the the tables for example you go well if i want to build an abandoned space that rough and ready kind of kind of fits but Things like the tree stump, which really has very little detail, or the candlestick, or the skeleton in the cage, which doesn't read. Yeah, so interesting. Interesting. Um, the Incubus asks a question. Was this a choice made mm -hmm. with design or server storage in mind? Is server storage even a consideration? No, it was. No, server storage is not a consideration. Um, it's, it, is, it is purely a design um question because we we see that now it is fairly obvious like if you're if you're browsing the community hub um and you're checking for for the latest maps maps that have been created with the new background textures and the new background system and and probably the new um, um presets that we've created they're often much prettier than maps that have been done with just the pure choice of pick your own texture, pick a grass texture, pick the assets. So the balancing between all the components like background, brushes, props, lighting, walls, um, all those make a map look really good. Mm -hmm. So by taking away, to some extent, by taking away ugly, things although they are still things that someone might want to use yes i think we can generally improve the overall quality of maps that are mm. being created mm. and um it is there are two kind of philosophies clashing often in in our conversations in in the office which is the one philosophy is the very um let's say open source developer philosophy of give me everything i want to do everything so yeah. the tool should do everything um which often ends up in being too complicated versus no limit the the, the mm. possibilities which leads into less possibilities but also less let's say learning curve to actually get a good result out of what i can do and um so that's kind of that's the thought process that's being discussed and, 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 and decided here. And I think the way that we also with, with version six, the way that we want to move forward is we want to give a very easy experience to create awesome looking maps. Mm -hmm. And that only then if someone wants to expand into advanced options, then we give those advanced options as, as a choice of activation and not as a matter of beginning. you have to mm. deal with all the settings at the beginning um, because that might confuse things. And the same goes for assets. It is um, it is great that a wall can be made out of grass. I think that's cool because yeah. you can create walls and rooms that you 
could possibly not create another software. But should that be the first option or should a wall, when you draw it, should not say, well, I'm a stone wall with a wooden floor. Mm. That's what you would expect. Oh, wait, you want to do a grass wall? Okay, you need to go into advanced options and change the texture now to grass, mm. something like that, right? And so with the props, it's the same. The easier the suggestion is for props that says, hey, you're placing down a table. Would you like a chair? Um, and then there's only one chair that actually fits that table, makes it much easier for, for users than having to browse through tons of yeah. chairs if that's not the intent of what I wanted to do as a user. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. I, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's really cool stuff. <laughs> that's really cool stuff. Till when is this pack going to drop? Okay, we're, we're currently um, we're currently finishing up. So it's it's my responsibility at the moment to create the floor textures and the floor backgrounds. Um, I hope that I can have them all finished by next week, um, which means then it's it just needs to be uploaded. Um, and and we still have to make that final call how we are going to distribute it. Mm. So. My best guess would be that within the next 10 days, it will be ready to be released. Might, it might be 14 days, um, but I think that we're talking about a two week window when, when mm. the new packs will, will hit. I'm not Life saying service. that my birthday is in September, but I get older in September. And if I had an asset pack to play with, I'd feel a lot better about it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Okay. We've got some questions Noted. quickly <laughs> before we move forward. Um, Lensman de Leoncourt asks the question, has someone challenged Lord God? Now, this would be for the map battle madness and the title yes. king of that particular battle. Yes. Um, and that is actually something that we are looking to do around our anniversary is um, the next battle madness um and the challenger of lord god is actually currently in the chat and i think is awkwardly looking to the left and to the right um so yes the next map battle will be between lord god the um acting champion of battle madness mm -hmm. and the challenger incubus the incubus who's there going go. to show us whether they are capable of dethroning lord god it's a tough challenge it's a tough challenge i can't wait to see that that's going to be a lot of fun now, if you haven't seen those before yeah. they are live they'll be live on twitch i'm assuming and uh they are quite we're, insane. we're going to do it yes so you can find the if, if you want to watch the the old battle madness well mm. first one was me <laughs> against guy um that's on youtube you can find that on our youtube channel then um, Lord God challenged me mm. um, in a competition where we picked of several people who wanted to, to, to do the challenge. Lord God actually made it, made it top the ladder and then kicked me off the throne instantly. Um, so now Lord God sits there and enjoys his, his place, which the Incubus might change soon. Indeed. So keep an eye out. We're getting, we're, 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 September is coming. Everyone's hmm. back at the office. We're, we're now getting into planning phases for those things. So there will be announcements on social media in time. It is definitely going to be around. And hmm. let's say end of October, beginning of November, ideally on the 5th. But I can't make that promise because I haven't spoken to Lord God and the Incubus about exact hmm. timing hmm. of that event. Perfect. Another question from the Incubus, as a matter of fact. Uh, you still post YouTube videos, uh, right, Guy? It's, uh, I still have YouTube videos, but yes. Dungeon Fog definitely still posts oh. all of their videos onto YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, so just, just, just to clear up the confusion, um, mm. there has been a change in the terms of service for Twitch, um, which does not allow multi-streaming anymore. Um, so, we had to decide where do we want to stream. Um, our mapping it out. And we decided that the best way to move forward is to do the live stream on Twitch. 
And then after the stream is over, I'll download it, I'll convert it, and I will upload it to YouTube. So in the next couple of days, mm -hmm. this mapping it out will be available on YouTube. And the same goes for all the other content that we are going to produce in the future. There we go. Another question from Lensman is, uh, this is to the props and the fantasy props particularly. Uh, will mm -hmm. there be an option for users to download the old props or perhaps move them to a My Library section so that individuals will just always have them? I would highly recommend to check out our next Mapping It Out in September because there is going to be something that you will very much enjoy when we look at it and it will hopefully fully answer your question. I like it. I like it. Um, ah. Uh, all right. Uh, sorry, I just saw a uh, stream of German. Um, you've gefallen <laughs> yes, die battle element. maps im Stream uh, mit Dungeon Fog Hunt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where I stop there. That's not a question. Any other questions before we move on? Uh, no, good. Right. So that means we can move on. And that means we are moving on to the community hub. Are you ready to play some music, Till? Uh, what music? No, I never play music. This is from our awesome playlist of amazing transition sounds. Okay, here we go. Community maps! Huh. Yeah, you should get your money back. Uh <laughs> hey! <laughs> All right, lovely. Uh, and I forgot to change the slide. Okay, so community spotlight. Folks, today Till presented the community spotlight maps to me to have a look at. And there's one in here which it has, it's an honorable mention because it's just, well, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. And of course, you're going to see it last because of that. But the rest of the maps are also amazing, amazing, amazing. And till people can get these maps yes of course so i'm um, let's assume that the person who is responsible to activate the latest community spotlight maps in our hub has done his job wink Bodhi. um then i would assume that um they are already in the community hub under the section latest community hub spotlight maps okay so right. you can go and clone you should them find them online if not today then tomorrow fantastic all right um so we have had quizzical monk asking some questions so let's get some clarity here um just once and for all um so quizzical yes. monk says so this is not deos this is the dungeon fog other builder right Yes, this the other is builder. Yes, the yes. other builder. This is the battle map editor. Exactly. And the question is, can the battle map editor, the maps you make in that battle map editor, can those be used commercially? Uh, yes, to some extent, because we have a commercial license. So if you want to create those maps and use them commercially, um, just go to our website, dungeonfog.com, I think, slash pricing. And there you can see the options. There is an option for a commercial licensing. Um, and uh, we are actually, I think, in the next couple of days, uh, releasing a more thorough FAQ on when do I need commercial licensing versus when does a regular license um, apply. Long story short, if you're making money with maps that you have created with Dungeon Fork, you should have a commercial license. If you if you hand them out through on drive through RPG for free because they're free maps and you're not you're not building a business around map making, um, you can actually do it with a with a um, regular license. But there are some some things that you need to pay attention to. Correct. And if you've got things like Patreon, that counts as making money off of the maps, even if you're not selling the maps on Patreon. You're still yep. being paid for them. Now, we have used that commercial license multiple times. We've generated books. Uh, I've generated books, uh, epic battle maps using the uh, commercial license. Till and I did a book, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit, which used those maps with commercial license. So it is absolutely, absolutely possible. Right. So let's get on with the maps. The first one 
is called Riven Wish Chasm. Riven Wish yes. Chasm. Very pretty. Yeah, the 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 chasm is is really pretty. Um, I think the the caving. I would say um, there could be a bit more um, curvature organic or, mm. curvature. Yeah, but generally speaking, I think this is this is a very good battle map when you look at it because you have that chasm, you have that bridge across, you have those two areas. I I would I would assume that whenever you are on the bridge something is going to attack um so you oh. have to fight in this narrow space and um yeah that's the terrifying part how far or down is that drop because if you look they've used yeah. very small crystals so and it's not a very wide bridge five foot now i see that what they've done here is that they have actually used the brush tool to put the grid in and that's the hand-drawn grid from the yes. old school battle maps and it just looks so much nicer exactly. i think yeah all right. Yeah, Next it's, it's, up. it's an amazing map. It's really well done. Really cool. And chat agrees, loving the colors. Um, so, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. Next up, Omskirk Dungeon. This was a spectacular uh, collection of things. Now, till there's more to this map than just meets the eye, is that correct? In terms of you said there were notes and 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 oh yes 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 <laughs> sorry i was like wait what <laughs> what what secrets did i miss um yes no i think um whenever whenever i whenever i see maps that are not just the image but the planning i'm super happy it just makes me so happy because um for someone like me who's i have two office games so i'm playing almost every week every second week um and i need maps i can't always draw them myself so i really love the community hub and um when i then browse through the hub and i can see that there's a map who someone else already thought about mechanics and kind of narrative structure i'm super happy because just reading those notes i think so if you grab that map go to the hub mm -hmm. look at it grab it and i'm I'm, I'm almost guaranteeing that you will start while reading it, you will start to think about what can I do to tweak it for my game? That's a really cool idea. I'm going to keep that. This, I probably adjust. I might need a room here or there, but it, it instantly starts to work with you. And I'm always happy to see when people add, even if those are just those tiny notes to the map mm. um, or using our gm note system to actually write detailed notes about that's right room. that's right and i see they've even got tokens included in there so really cool okay next up is and i hope i don't butch it the edificant library by nakai the edificant library also huge map love the map. reference to the chapel on the left hand side very mm -hmm. traditional layout um, of the apps, the trance apps, and then the uh, nave with yeah. the, just some lovely color work going on up there. Um, and then the central lighting, chamber. Also, really lighting. Cool. There's lots of tokens involved as well. Um, so just a, a very cool space. And, and for a library, you go, ah, this is where my adventurers can go uh to to spend some time it looks like there's also a refractory right. there for the librarians a dining room table with a oh. lot of mugs or plates or something um you can imagine also the I, I just i just saw it in the chat and i have to agree um mm. with um battle source um working with thicker walls can make such a difference so so mm. by default our our room tools have a default wall size which you can change when you do that, you can create very interesting architecture because you have those um, uh, structural walls that might be thicker, and then you have kind of design walls that might be added later. So your your architecture becomes, and especially for castles um, or old mansions, this is what happened. Um, there were thick walls um, that were kind of carrying the, the, the structure. And then thinner walls were added to create more rooms and more separate spaces. So working with something like that is actually really cool and, and can enhance the, the aesthetics of mm. the, 
the architecture that you're creating quite drastically. Yeah. Next is Forest Road by Zotek. Quite contrasty yep. to the dark library. Quite that contrasty. We have now we have yes. a bright day uh, forest road. Um, I think again you can see with the with I think I think it, it's using the the new background system. It is definitely using some of those um, hill hill shadows that we've released a while ago um and Path paths and lots of assets so, from the other contributors yeah. too mm. yeah uh, exactly I, um so i think this is also a very very nice map to yeah. to for for a travel encounter for a random encounter um really good yeah i love the little pond up in the top the, the waterwork is quite delicate it's quite mm -hmm. lovely Quite lovely. Mm -hmm. As someone in chat says, Critical Monk says, uh, someone call Howard Shaw. Wow, absolutely. Yes, it does feel like the shower. Uh, the shower. It feels like the shower. It feels like the shire. That's what it feels like. The shire. It feels like a shower. Anyway, right. Now we get to the honorable special mention. And I've called it an honorable special yes. mention. Um, because it's by King X Pickles or King Cross Pickles um, or just King Pickles. And it's called Woodworker Shop. And I guarantee you it does not look anything how you've pictured it that is a battle fog a battle map map i mean it's crazy it's made in dungeon fog and you it's can see absolutely a lot of the crazy um yeah. Yes. yeah 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 now when i saw that and check check out um this artist because this is not the only this was one it went up into that's how we pick community spotlights it went mm. it went into the hottest maps and we saw it and we were all like the whole team everyone was like wait what um and then we look at the, the other maps that that this artist has been doing and there are some more of those dioramas um but it is it is so weird so cool to see for someone, for us, we created that software um, to see that you can take it and do something completely different with it, and it's. I think it looks amazing. Exactly, exactly. Chat's going crazy. That's like, wow, this is nostalgic. Makes me think back to the DOS days. Yeah, looking at this, I kind of feel like this is Ultima Online or Ultima Eight or or. or... You know, where there's a little cut scene and the, the blacksmith is doing their I, I thing. I kind of, I, yeah, yeah. I kind of <laughs> feel like somewhere should be a question that's like, would you like to combine X head with right. newspaper? <laughs> yes, yes. Something, something along those lines. Um, anyway, so that's community maps for you. Some spectacular maps as usual. And uh, so if you want your map, submit it to the community. Share, share and share alike. And who knows, yep. you might be the next featured map in September. So there we are. That brings us to the end of... Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I'm lying. There's one last thing that we, we, we needed to talk about. We started talking about it. We moved away. And that is the... This thing. This is the thing. This thing. <laughs> yes. I couldn't even remember the name of the, my book. So this is a book that <laughs> Till and I wrote, The Creator's Guide to Epic Locations, uh, Nature. And it has been a long time in development and in writing, and it has gone out to all of the Kickstarters uh, backers as a PDF. And the PDF is now available from the website greatgamemaster.com. You can pick up a copy of the PDF if you want to get it now. Physical copies are only expected to drop somewhere in the November-December range, as these PDFs still have to be turned into actual books. Please bear in mind, if you buy the hard copy book, you get the PDF for free. So only get this PDF if you are a PDF collector or if you really need to get the book right now. And Till, what, what, what? you made a whole bunch of maps for this. Talk to us about yes. those maps. Yes, uh, 36, 33. I, I, I'm not, I can't remember the exact number. Mm. But I went through almost wherever I could through... through I would say 99% of the epic locations that we feature in the book. And I, I looked at them and I said, okay, what what battle maps can you do with them mm. um, that kind of fall in line with the concept of the book, with the idea of what you want to do here? Um, 
and yeah, and so there there's a bunch of maps there um, that I made with Dungeon Fork. They're not available yet because they are part of the Kickstarter um, rewards or Kickstarter add-ons. Mm -hmm. But I'm fairly certain that next year we will be making them available um, in Dungeon Fork. In some shape or form, yes. Absolutely. In some shape or form, yes. Now, <laughs> I love live streams because they're like, give me free stuff because I'm watching your channel. I mean, it's a fair ask, right? It's a fair ask. And to be perfectly honest with you, if it was the fifth anniversary of some software, then maybe we'd be giving away things. Maybe we'll be doing that in the next stream. Maybe we'll do that in the special fifth anniversary. I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying, well, if you're not going to be there, you can't win anything. So yep. take that as you like. Anyway, right. That brings us to the end of tonight's battle map editor, mapping it out behind the scenes. And hopefully you have been as excited for the new asset pack as I was and for all of the cool things coming up. Next month, we talk about all sorts of new and wonderful things. And uh, so stay with us. We're going to take a very brief break uh, as uh, we switch over to Deos, which is the world map maker. And we've got a juicy, juicy demo for you, as well as some other bits and bobs. And the question that I will leave you with is, are you Scottish and do you live in mines with a candle on your helmet? Or perhaps you are German and you live in a mine with the candle on your helmet. What are you, Scottish or German? That's the big debate, isn't it? And we will solve that question when we come back in a few minutes. <laughs> What's got you down, Ogger? It's my dungeon, Gobbler. What's wrong with it? It could be so much more, you know? With more stuff. It can't be that bad. Let me have a look. No, no, you've got a nice dungeon swamp full of snakes and spikes. Ah, snakes and spikes. Very nice. But... I mean, that's it. How am I supposed to attract adventurers with that? Two words. Dungeon fog. Dungeon what? Dungeon fog. For over three years, we have put all our love and determination into making Dungeon Fog the best battle map map-making tool out there. Thanks to you, our amazing community, Game Masters can pick from over 10,000 community-created and shared maps and can turn them into their own epic dungeons to use and share. None of this would have been possible without you. Thank you. And may our tools always help you to create maps your players will never want to leave and explore. So, what do you think, Goblar? It certainly is different. Different. Right. Hello and welcome to Project Deos. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome to tonight's show. Some very basic housekeeping the show is live on twitch now it is not live on youtube anymore but highlights from the show and the show itself will be available on youtube in the next few days so if you miss something you can always catch it there that's on the dungeon fog youtube channel as well if you have a question please put the word question in caps uh oh i, I see till is <laughs> Just moving himself over a little bit. Uh, but yes, if you have a question, just drop it in. And I will ask it as soon as, as humanly possible. And uh, there we go. Now, we have got some interesting stuff for you tonight. There's a new patch coming out. There's a new setting pack that's coming out. And we've got a demo. I mean, what more could you ask for? Seriously. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun.
So city tool demo, city tool demo. Yes, absolutely, city tool demo. Now I asked the question, are you Scottish? Or are you from the mountains of Germany? And the answer to that is a universal universal debate is are dwarves in your campaign? Are they Scotsmen who live underground and dig for rocks and gold? Or are they of a Germanic origin? In which case they are digging for the gold in the mines and they are looking for all of the things. And now that I have insulted Till um, and uh, most of the Germanic-speaking people, uh, here we go. <laughs> you know, I would love to be able to do a Scottish accent in German. I really would love to be able yes. to do that. Um, it's super hard. Um, so my dwarves actually are Swiss because I can do a Swiss accent. What does a Swiss accent sound like in German? That literally, I mean, I mean, my German is terrible. That I, li that I'm amazed. I'm blown away. That's wonderful. So it's very. Um... Well, I'm very sorry. All the Swiss are now hating me. Um, but that is <laughs> That's right. my stereotypical interpretation of a Swiss is accent that in right? German. Swiss dwarf. Yeah. There we go. Uh, if well, you think about it, a very, a very Swiss dwarf might. That sounds really fun if you, if you, if you throw a Swiss there dwarf on your team. Lovely. Well, now they're Swiss as well. You live and learn. And that has nothing to do with today's show. But you know what? Why not? We're about creativity here. <laughs> Project Deos moves swiftly forward. And it starts with a patch. And the patch yes, with a patch. is 0 0.5.13. Um... Yes. What's so it? that's the that's the latest patch. It's mm. in preparation. It's actually um, in QA testing. So we're just looking at it, see if we break anything. We broke some things with the latest patch, which we are now fixing again. Um, and therefore, we said, okay, probably we should do a bit more QA testing before we release a new patch. And that is happening right now. Um, I would expect the patch either by the end of this week or early to mid next week. And it will be, as always, released to the auto updater. So when you open Deus, it will say a new patch is available. Do you want to update? Um, or if for some reason your auto updater is not working, you can go to deus.dungeonfog.com, log in with your account and grab the latest version directly from the website. Fantastic. Right. Fantastic. But All of course, right. it will also come with the new asset pack that we're talking about. Yes, and to that point, there is a question which says that now that the last asset pack has been released, except for the Dead House Sonata pack, um, what is the future of the assets looking like? Well, 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 what an appropriate question. But I think let's answer that one first. How is Dead House Sonata going? Um, well, to be honest, we, we haven't... Um... We haven't been in contact with that house sonatas for quite some time that's mm. why we did and i think we've released it already that's why we decided that we're going to do the dark lord setting which mm. was released two months ago three months ago mm. um as um our kind of intermediate solution to the topic because that house sonata was gothic and dark mm. and vampire -y. um so we said okay we're doing the dark lord setting and if if and when we get in touch with that house sonata to work on specific assets that might be uh setting specific then we can put them into the dark lord setting lovely lovely so what are we now doing we're now doing mini packs right what's yes, mini pack? what we call so as part of the Kickstarter campaign, we had several kind of mini content packs that focus mm. on specific species um, or topics. I think mostly species. Some are more topical, um, like architectural mm. or, or, or thematical. Um, they're smaller bundles because they you don't need dwarvish mountains mountains are mountains um but 
how do you style an existing mountain in a way that it is absolutely clear that dwarves that dwarves have have figures into the mountain face that mines are around there mm. that there is a settlement full of dwarven builders or constructors nearby so um we kind of narrowed down the focus of what buildings are required to make a specific location or area on the map species thematic hmm. and so there we go that's the mini packs and this is the first one be it exactly. scottish german or swedish <laughs> Uh, Swiss. Now you're going Not, Sweden. No, no. Swiss. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry to. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going <laughs> to shut up. Just look at the asset pack. Just look at the asset pack. <laughs> so as you can see, compared to compared to the full settings, um, the packs are are um including smaller amounts of assets, which does not take away from the amazing artwork that Kiora did to create those assets. So you can see that there are those giant statues that you can put over a city, into a mountain, into a forest, wherever you want to put them. You have all those amazing buildings and construction sites and also the very dwarvish kind of industrial um, mechanisms that you can use and lovely details in there. Mm. Now, I did have a question because... I, I have an affinity for ships and it looks to me, I beg your pardon, it looks to me like there is a ship there. Yep. In the middle. I think the so too. Statue. Yeah. But is it a mm -hmm. land ship or is it an aquatic ship? Because I don't know. It, 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 I suppose that's the beauty. Well, of the I asset. think if you, if you, I'm not sure which setting. Uh, but I do remember that we have wheels. I think it's in the space um, setting. Mm. Um, the the um, what's it called? Well, it's the planetary Star Trek. Sorry, we're not mm. saying Star Trek. It's mm -mm. the planetary. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, it's the planetary um, alien setting. There are some wheels that you can place. Mm. So I think if you take that ship, I think you you could very much take some of the assets that are in there and mm. construct something um, that can make it like a desert ship. Yeah. But with some wheels on it, it could be a land ship. Um, and of course, it's up to you where you place it. It might even be, how dare you, an aquatic ship. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. So that's the that's the the packs. And uh, when will this pack come out with the new patch? Is that correct? With the new patch, and again, new patch is being in the works, is being finished, will be released um, by the end of this week or next week, um, depending on how QA testing goes along. Perfect. Okay, City Map Maker. We've been on this journey for quite some time and we're getting there right i mean yeah once city map maker's done what's what's next after city map maker what's before next? we go into into the roadmap so just what's next yes um so city map maker is our goal is still to have it finished somewhere around october or november this year um so that um it is like when i say finished i mean in a in a beta state where you can actually start working with it and we collect feedback and improve things. Um, we've started with it on like concept. I think we started December and programming and work. We started in January where we, where we worked on prototyping first and then took the prototypes and converted them into the new city editor mode mm. that has been already um, established in, in, in the desktop application. Um, and now we're, Dropping in, we're basically working on tool per tool basis where we say, okay, th let's finish this tool. Let's move on to this tool. Um, and so we're, we're slowly ticking off all the tools. And once we're done with that, we know that we need to go back once more to the world map editor because we have learned a lot of things mm. during city map making where we said, oh, we could have done this much better in the world map editor. 
And also we, we get your feedback, we listen to what people say, and we know that some of the tools that are currently in there are not very well received and, and people hope that we can improve stuff. So after we've done city map making and plus a phase where we just patch and fix and update city map making, we're going back to world map making and improve world map making while we are waiting for version six to be finished mm. with the battle map editor, which will then allow us to plot the battle map editor into the desktop software. Lovely, lovely. Oh, so exciting, so exciting. All right, let's look at the roadmap. This is where we stand yes. as of today. Exactly, so here you can see the, the journey so far. Um, We have, uh, what was it, January when we started with all the stuff and now we've worked through most of it, um, for those of you who pay attention to the um, Kickstarter updates and our mapping it out, you can see that um, things also change on the roadmap. So, if, for example, the rock prop placement um, takes longer than we anticipated. It's That's not 100% accurate. We anticipated that prop placement alongside the road might be um a hercules task to do and might need more time than we initially planned for um that's why those darker gray bars or darker bars next to it always are our buffer times um but apart from that that is work in progress i have a demo for it today so we can see where we are at the moment but before we we we, we call it finished I think there's still some fine tuning to do, um, but the, the the general core is done, prop placement is done, um, labels are done, brushes. Unfortunately, we're we're really close to being ready to to demo brushes, but not there yet. So I can't show brushes in today's stream, but I'm fairly certain that we will be finished with them in September, so we can then show how brushes work. Um, because we're um that is one of the tools where we've learned how to how to improve um our brushes and they will eventually find their way back into the world map editor and then what's left for us to do is walls because city walls apparently um should be in there as well um uh, water bodies you want to have rivers lakes or, or coastlines um both are semi started or semi finished because we've already we have existing code for those things we just need to kind of replug it and 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 see if if it performs the way that we want it to perform and then the i would say the biggest part actually then is is just clean up ui interface improvements making sure that all the all the tools in conjunction are stable um and hopefully I'm not I'm not saying that we can make it. We're aiming for it by the end of September or 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 mid-October. We are in a state where we can say, okay, this is now slowly getting into an alpha testing phase where we hand it out to everybody and say, okay, here's here's the city map maker. Just test it because we then want to spend um at least two months on just brushing it up, making it stable, making it um, nice to use, which means that um, we are then transitioning into beta and final release. Or December, as uh, the calendar says. Um, I, yeah. I do enjoy finding the German spelling uh, in, the, in the chart. So I was like, oh, Des? Oh, oh, des. oh because I des have a... Oh. a Z and Yeah, C right. C. Yes, it's all good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Lensman says, uh, uh, hmm. uh, has a decision been made regarding moving Deus into beta before implementing the battle map editor? Oh, um... Honestly, I can't remember at the moment. Um, we have been we've been tossing around ideas. It's it's mainly naming, um, to be honest. Mm. Um, I think the world map editor needs at least some more touches before we can call it a beta. Um, mm. But I'm pretty sure that we will not wait for v six to be finished before we call it a beta 
in general. Um, because V6 is, that's work. That's just, we need to build V6 for the Batmap editor so that it can work as a desktop application, which means we can plug it in there. Um, so generally, I would say there is still some work to do before we can call the world map editor and the city map editor beta material. But we might not stick in alpha until um, V6 is ready because that might be um, a long time compared to what then needs to be done on, on world map and city map. Mm -hmm. uh, another question. Do we have a release window for the city builder alpha that is going to be released on Discord? Uh, yes. So to be honest, we, we're, we're, we're fairly close. Um, we, we might be seeing some of those um, hard to track crashes in the demo today, where sometimes the roads, um, we th we're fairly certain we know what it is, but we haven't narrowed it down yet. Um, I, when you have a weird angle um, on an intersection, it can cause a crash. And um, just for playing around with it, I think there's no value in handing out a build that crashes on you. It, it should at least be stable enough for it. And as Ilya and Andre have returned from their vacations now um, a couple of weeks ago as well, and are now finishing up the, the release build for, um, for the world map editor, um, once they transition back to, um, to city map improving, Ilya is mm -hmm. currently working on bug fixing, uh, once that is stable, then we will hand it out. So there's a good chance that within the next couple of weeks, you will you will see a message in our Discord that says, hey, for those of you who are crazy enough to play around with something that is very much in the works, um, here's a build, download it, test it, have fun with it. There we go. And give us Love feedback. It. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. All right. Fantastic. Now, um, I've got some other questions here, but I think that they're probably going to be asked next month because I'm eager to get to this demo. I really want to see this demo because it's super, super okay. exciting. So, um, right. Uh, I'm just looking. Do I have any other questions remaining? No, those can all wait. Those can all wait. Right. So let's go to the demo. Till, are you ready to swap? I am ready to swap whenever you give me the countdown. Oh, wait, right. no, I'm not. Uh, give me a second. Uh, no, I am. All right. Three, two, one, swap. Perfect. Almost perfect. And then all I have to do is go to uh, this thing here, which is... Now I can't find it. I can find it. Yes. And I have to turn off that. And boom, the map is now the right color. Boom. Okay. Boom. So here you can see um, the current state, and um, I will do my best without crashing it for now to just show you what, what you can do with the road artery system and the prop placement that is alongside it. Now, you might, um, there, a lot of those toggles that you can see here are developers toggles. Um, not all of them are necessarily available to you once we release them. They are available to me and to the team for testing. So we can compare states and see when does it crash? Did Is the cause the prop placement or a curved angle or whatsoever? Um, but let me just let me just get stuff activated. So point click mode, straight line. I know that this is um, fairly stable which means that as I continue my road system here, um, it is, as you can see, it is, it is now creating nice split intersections mm. and I can go and combine them. And we have prop placement. Now, prop placement, I have to expand a little bit on that. Um, there are a lot of factors. Um, we knew that from start, if you remember when we did the concept chats in, mm. in, in March, I think, um, we were talking about all the implications that come with prop placement in there, um, like the distance to the road, the distance to adjacent buildings, the orientation of a building, the amount of different buildings to create a huge variety. We're not using all the assets because there, here you can see the, the assets that are um, part of the base pack that came from Keora. Um, there are quite some assets in there. And um, 
there are a lot of buildings in there. I'm not sure. I think I can filter for buildings. Buh, 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 buh. While you're doing that, just a quick reminder to those of you who are watching, the stream is compressing the artwork and the overall look and feel quite yeah. heavily. There's just nothing we can do about it. So um, yeah. it is a lot a lot prettier than you might be seeing, just to, to let you know. Yeah. So there's a ton of buildings in there, and we need to, we need to figure out um, which and how do we want to use them mm. to actually make this. And I think we can all agree this is already nice, but it doesn't look very organic at the moment. Um, part of it is because um, the, the brushes are not in there, so you can't really create nice background textures um, for the city. But another part, of course, is, and I can go closer in, so, so the compression is, is, mm. is showing it in more detail. Um, a part of it is because those buildings are not properly aligned towards the road yet. Um, there's not a huge variety of buildings in there. Um, and we, so... For, for 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 our development build, this is what we're going for at the moment, and it, it is completely fine for us to actually see how things work. Um, and um, once we have figured out the best way to do stuff, um, we will then go in and do fine tuning for for all the things. So when I when I go here. Um, as you can see, I have that switch that says bind props because as you as you can see those hubs and also I think this is pretty cool and those unfortunately it's not working well pretty cool at least here it's working um they bind those assets to the road now this is a very rudimentary implementation um which kind of already showed us where more work is needed because you can do weird things with it um where I can kind of collect all those buildings together. <laughs> And have them have them in this in this big lump here, um, which is just something that we're aware of and that we need to address because it's not just the the spatial relation to the road, but it also needs to maintain a spatial relation to the other buildings. Why we and and it might be again it might be let's let's try it with a new one here. Um, yeah, intersections are not working apparently at the moment. Um, but the idea, the concept is that once that is done, let's do not place props and bindings. Let's just create an interesting road artery system. And we can all imagine that there are buildings everywhere. So what you want to do is you probably you have that and you decide that you actually want to oh my bad that you actually want to tweak those corners a bit which means that you want to move not just the single road but all the connections the road connections and the buildings follow along and adjust mm. um to create more space so that's the concept that's why we're playing around with it so much um because let me show you another map for a second you can see there's there's been a lot of testing going on with when can i break it what is happening um, but here you can see that, um, I think you can already do to some extent, interesting villages. They're just not interesting enough, mm. which means that the prop placement alongside the road needs more tweaking and needs more variety. And this is the process that we are currently in. Um, and I can... I can still, it's it's probably not going to adjust and address. Oh, fine. But the idea to, to be able to actually kind of tweak those things, and of course I can I can touch each building and I can move it um, manually. So the idea to be able to create something as a um, as a template. And then you go in and say, okay, now I would like to have, um, uh, oops, let me lock the land mass for now. I would like to have some trees here. Um, I think that is quite interesting. Um, and if we're doing our job correctly, 
then just using the artery system would actually already create an interesting cityscape. So let's just let's let's break it. Um, oh yeah, let's let's go through 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 some more options that are available. So we can already, or we should be. Let me see. Yeah, we should be already able to tweak the sizing of a road. There's actually a randomizer here that would say that when you draw a road, it would random randomly create different sizes, so it gets a wobbly road. Um, we have different surface textures. They're not super interesting at the moment. I think if I zoom in, you can see them better. So there are different types, like a dirt road and a cobblestone mm. road. Again, this is more like um, current state of the art um, texture and not so much final design. Um, there's also, I think that one was quite pretty, that is cobblestone transparent. Hmm. So that grass has grown between it and... Yeah, um... which I think is also quite interesting. And then there are going to be, of course, more textures at the end. Um, but right now, the goal is to understand what can we do with the tool? What textures hmm. do we need to support that effect? at the best. Um, and that's what we're currently working on. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, so we've got some questions here, two, two questions. Uh, firstly, for prop placement, will we be able to slot in specific buildings for, say, intersections, straight lines, roundabouts? Um, I mean, you can move buildings around and you can still so, manually go okay. and drop in buildings. But... So first of all, I think what we want to do is we want to give generally for a road, we want mm. to give a recommendation of props that should appear alongside the road based on the road type that you pick. So there's going to be options here where, you, where we say merchant road or high road or, or um, uh, housing um mm. slums whatever you think of we want to we want to prepare some options there but there's definitely going to be um an option where you can slot additional buildings into that palette that is going to be used so you can say alongside that road i don't i only want those those thatched roof buildings or wood wood roof buildings mm. or stone brick roof buildings or square buildings whatever it's it's basically you're going to you're going to be able to go in there and say this 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 and this should be as part of this road um, generation um, algorithm. Now, when it comes to um, when it comes to actually have intersections, and the question of whether or not you can do something else with the intersection, like a roundabout, we do have concepts for that. Um, but what we, our experimentation with it so far was not very aesthetically pleasing for us, which means that we have um, parked it and we said, okay, let's fix the other things first and then let's come back mm. to this question later. Um, because I think from an aesthetical standpoint, there are still things that need to be improved to make that look good. Brushes will be one. The distribution of buildings will be will be a second. And then the way that we render roads, the way that they work with the textures. Um, for those of you who stayed for the whole stream, you remember that we've been talking about the same topic in the battle map editor, mm -hmm. where we said, OK, the closer textures work with roads, work with buildings, work with brushes, all in one kind of sphere the better the outcome will be from scratch without having the user um, to adjust everything like color corrections and stuff like that. So that is um, Ilya and Andre are working on the technicalities while I am working with Kiora on the, 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 the aesthetics. There you go. There you go. The second question, I realize we have already answered what happens if you want to change your prop after it has been placed. Well, we already know we can go in and change them to our heart's content. Yes. Uh, then we have a complaint. 
a complaint. And I have to read this complaint to you. It says, You yes. have turned my mind into a raging torrent, flooded with rivulets of thought cascading into a waterfall of creative alternatives. So there you are. I think you've inspired someone. Either that or they uh, really need a plot. Wow. And the wording is amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. This is... Yeah. That's poetry. <laughs> it is indeed. It is indeed. It is. Oh, indeed. I, w I would love to get all my complaints in poetry in the future. <laughs> that would be really cool. <laughs> so if you're unhappy with something, please Write a poem. do it as, as, as poetic as this complaint has been phrased. <laughs> there you are. Till I think this demo has been really, really, really cool. Um, I think there's, there's yeah, but there's... I haven't broken it yet. Um, oh, okay. I, it, I think we can't end a stream without me breaking, breaking it. Um, yes. I noticed that you breaking. haven't used the curved option for roads. Is that because that yeah. is, is problematic? Um, oh. whoop, sorry, I had to. It's fine. It's fine. I just, I, I, I get prepped for breaking it. Um, ah. So I wanted to make sure that no windows behind there are visible. <laughs> Let me check if that's true. Yes, now it's yes. true. Okay. Um, yes, let's go for it. So there are two more options that we, we're currently not certain if they remain available. Um, that might mm. be due to the fact that you, you like them very much in, in, in the feedback phase, or we don't like them at all in our testing phase, and we get rid of them. So the one is... There is a free hand drawing, but as you can see, um, mm. it is not it's... as free hand as we would like it because if the angles get super weird, um, it breaks, um, which means that we have to give a kind of a degree of, of possibility where you can actually angle around the corner, which means that the free hand straight line, it, it mm. feels awkward opposed to the freehand straight line and so the point click straight line right um whereas the freehand curve i think and i'm running out of space here um the freehand curve i think is quite cool mm. um oh so that one putting houses next to the forest did you see that yeah i'm not sure if that was on purpose or by accident Though. It was definitely on purpose. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, guy. <laughs> let's see if you're. Let's see if you're true. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, Ilya, you're amazing. Yeah. Um. So, curved freehand is is actually working quite nicely. Hmm. Um. However, point click curve. is working too but there is a bug somewhere that there's a request it might... to make a roundabout maybe that will there's a request to make a roundabout okay mm. let's do a roundabout yeah. there you go there we go Oh, it's destroying you. It's moving your forest props accordingly. That's yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's trying to cut through the forest because that's yes. kind of the same mechanic that we have with rivers where it says, oh, cut through the forest. Yes. Um, and then it's trying to place buildings. I think, again, from where we are right now, it's super promising. Now, all we need to do is we need to figure out the right way to make those things aesthetically more pleasing mm, they than sort of they need are right now yardage don't they little walls yes around and the they need and yes and they need bits. we have fences and we mm. have um yard bushes we have all those things um we have boxes and carts and, and and barrels all those things out there so the trick is to get the algorithm in a way to populate the the, the, the space around the roads in a way that it actually um still not breaking it um nope well maybe we have to end oh i know what i can do to break it i'll if if i'm not breaking it with roads um i think i can just press undo and it might break <laughs> 
I mean, that's looking um, really yeah. good. That's looking really good already. And it I also, do like I, the idea. Um, I kind of feel like I'm going to just make the map, fill it with trees, and, yeah, and then, then deforest it with food. the roads through, because it's kind of putting my trees yeah, down yeah, automatically. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually yeah. that's actually quite clever. That might be a default that we do, where we say, okay, do you want to start on a blank map or a forest map or, forest or map a mountain or, map? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, it's not letting you break it. And now it's not letting me break it's, it. It's like um, no, I will. I will not break. <laughs> I will not break. Okay, which is good. I mean, yeah. How weird I mean, that we complain that we cannot map. break it. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you convert a road from one state to the other? So where you've got angles, can you, you can't click on it and, and say make it curved instead. So that, oh, that you can. roundabout um, that you've got there. Sorry, 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 sorry. Mm. I need to deselect that. The roundabout that I made here, you want that to be now without curvature. Sure. Or or the other roundabout or which doesn't have curvature making this it one. curved. See that one there? Yeah. This one. Mm. Okay, if I remember the shortcut, is it R? I'll break no, till R if was... I can't break the software. <laughs> yeah, R was remove. Um, what could it be? S is S? split. I know that one. Well, S is split. I know that one. I can split a row. What, what, um, what is smooth? There will be German? eventually. There will be right click on. Well, it's what the question should be. What's smooth in Russia? Um, ah, <laughs> so C was it C for curvature? I can't remember. I'm sorry. It is possible. I I just can't remember right now what the, the what the shortcut is. Yeah. Um, I will just now randomly press some. I mean, if you can't buttons. randomly break it by pressing random buttons, you've got a pretty solid build here. Ha! Ah. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't know which button it was, but it broke eventually. <laughs> it broke. Oh, lovely. All right. And with that, we come to the end of the show. Let's switch back, uh, Till. And three, two, one, switch. And let me just Hello. make you look normal. There, you're seeing all the magic. The magic is gone. Uh, where the hell is this thing? I hate the new layout. That they've done but there we go right now you look normal again and let's just bring you over a little bit more there we go right perfect this brings us to the end of the stream of course if you have any other questions jump onto the discord server hopefully the link will be in chat shortly jump on the discord server all the devs hang out there and you can ask them things directly and uh, give your feedback as well as do a whole bunch of other things and of course get updated on the latest news so you can head there or you can head to the website www.dungeonfog.com where you can get all of the updates as well and so we will be back next month end of september yes for uh, some more stuff some really cool stuff hopefully we'll be demoing a lot of assets oh yes oh, oh assets. if you if you have mm. the means to block it's going to be the last tuesday of September. September. Mm -hmm. Make sure to be there. I'm I am um, I can already promise you that there is going to be really cool stuff for the battle map editor to show. And there's going to be a lot of cool stuff for mm. City Map Maker to show. And more and more and more and more. I'm uh, September is going to be an amazing month, and that's just the prelude to October where even cooler things will there we take go. place. I'm so, all right. Me well, too. then, thank you all for watching, for joining us, and for all of your wonderful questions. Big thank you to our moderators who were in chat. And until next time, all that I have to say is... Oh, he Happy map making! Oh, I did it. I shouldn't have paused. I should have just done it. I should have just done it. But I didn't. <laughs> <laughs>